Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Mr. Money TV live on Thursday night. We have been on the break for quite a while, right? right one Frankie? week only, one week only. Yeah, it feels yeah. like forever. It feels sometimes. like forever, right? Uh, next yeah. week also we will be off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's uh, Hari Raya, right? Actually, it's Hari Raya, mm. right? I don't think you all want to be watching us live. Lah. Yeah, lah. go and makan kenduri better. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true, that's true. Yeah. So, Yo, uh, how's your week been, up, Frank- everyone. Frankie? Back to uh, it has been busy, man. Busy with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Busy. Partly, partly is to finish all the work before before next week's break, mm-hmm, lah, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think there's quite a lot that we have to do, right? Mm. Yeah. Anything exciting for you over the week? Exciting for me, ah, Bitcoin, oh, Bitcoin is the most exciting. Push. Because oh. suddenly dropped from 70, 73, 70,000, ah, drop all the way down to 65, right? Yeah. So whether that's a threat or opportunity, that's, it's, it's that's very hard true. to say. So, um, yeah, some of my time has been uh, uh, spared to look at the market quite a bit. Also. Some or quite a lot of your time? Some only. Like, <laughs> some only like. The other day, uh, Bob came over, Bob was like, Wow, your uh, Frankie screen is always uh, on the markets, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was showing him, you know, oh, I've been tracking commodities, tracking markets, tracking yeah. interest rates, and it's like, wow, you track so many things. That's true, that's <laughs> true. I think Bitcoin would definitely be one of the things that we are covering tonight mm. because this is part of the asset that we are talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if we actually were to look at uh, overall, uh, what has been happening in the market recently is that the market is starting to become a little bit much more volatile, I would say. Mm. Don't you think so? Uh, yeah, one day up and then the other day down. And then when it goes down, right, it's not like a small drop. Like a couple of days ago, I think all the major US indices went down by close to 1% or if, or even overshot by 1%. Mm, and mm. then the next day, right, oui, suddenly everything recovered. Like nothing happened like that. That's true, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. So, um... For me personally, let's just talk a little bit about the the uh, Bitcoin stuff since we're already on it. Ah, uh, can right? Sure, no uh, just very very quickly, yeah. right? Uh, today we're gonna cover on why the overall asset prices are dropping, which mm. is the market in general. Yeah, in general, it's no dropping. Uh, what kind of market? Most of the markets are dropping. Yeah. So yeah. today we're gonna cover a little bit on the macro side. Mm. Yeah. We're gonna cover a little bit a uh, discussion on the stock side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the whole AI thing, the whole. Uh, stock market, mm. chips, you know, blah, 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 and so on. And then definitely uh, crypto. Yeah, but uh, just one interesting observation that I want to point out is that if you actually look at the big picture mm. of a technical chart, right, mm-hmm. on crypto right now, if you were to go to your trading view, right, you were to see between 2022, uh, okay, all the way to uh, right now, right, it is forming a very interesting uh, cup and handle uh, formation. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Right. So it's been going through a down, like like kind of like a valley going down. Okay. So a cup and handle works like after a shoot up, it goes down, it goes okay. up like, like a that. U shape, and then after that, another bounce up. Yeah. Oh, so where are we now in this in this W kind of thing? Uh, we are definitely, if it, let's say theoretically, mm. uh, theoretically we are at that place where the handle, the handle part before oh. it has that shoot, and uh, I mean that's because we are we we are the positive <laughs> side right now. Yeah. Uh, at least that's what we think, yeah. and we can be wrong. I just want to say that we can correct, be wrong. Correct. Right? Because technical chart is just theory, right? Yes. Yeah, what right. if you go like that already, then the next one, the handle that is supposed to go up, what it yeah, drops yeah, you can, down. You can shoot back now, right? right uh, it's correct. just that we are we are positive about the market. Mm. So please don't take our word seriously. It's just for entertainment and education <laughs> purposes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nonetheless, I would say that uh, recently, whenever Bitcoin goes down, I kind of rejoice. Mm. Yeah, I kind of rejoice. Yeah. Mm. So, new, new chance to see whether you want to add your position or not. Yep, yep. And later we're going to talk a little bit about fundamentals as well mm. on why do we have uh, such a positive uh, view on things, right? Mm. Uh, but before that, maybe you guys can write down in the comment what do you guys think? Do you guys think that you're positive about the crypto world or you think that you are not so positive about what's going to be happening, right? Mm. Uh, probably you can put up a poll as well. Now, let's start by talking about why all these prices has been going down, right? Mm. Uh, maybe we want to touch a little bit on the macro side first. Yeah, so the whole entire market has been quite volatile, right? So even the politics side is also very, very volatile. Uh, politics, we are not just talking about the KK Mart issue with all the socks <laughs> and all that, right? That's, 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 that's our own volatility. <laughs> but when we talk about the world, the, the globe, I think the problem is much larger than just socks itself, right? <laughs> so one of the biggest issues is that this week alone, 
uh, Ukrainian people, Ukrainian, they, 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 they launched an attack on a Russian oil refinery, their third largest oil refinery mm. in Russia. So if you guys know about this, right, Russia is one of the major oil producers that's in right, the world. That's right. So when, when something happens with their oil production, then of course it is going to affect the oil prices. Mm. And when Ukrainians hit their third largest oil refinery, we're talking about 155,000 barrels a day being affected. Yep. Then people will start asking 155,000, what does it mean? Is it pump two cars finished ready? Or, oh, or, car. <laughs> or, or how, right? How much is 155,000 barrels a day? So for context, the entire world add up together, produce around 20 million barrels a day. Mm. 155,000 is about 0.8%. Mm. So one drone strike like that, right? Close to 1% of oil production is affected. Mm. So that one incident alone, make a lot of people panic and say, whoa, if you yep. can strike an attack like that, right? are you going to do second and third attack? And if this happens, and you're talking about Russia being one of the oil major in the world, what's going to happen? That's right. So that's, that's one of the reasons why oil price has been going up. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Then you will be thinking, oil price go up, good, man. Then how does it apply, apply to all the asset classes, right? Then you, you, are, you are saying that, oh no, everything is coming down. Okay. It has got to do with what the central bankers want to do. So mm -hmm. all the central bankers lately, what they want to do is to bring down inflation. And one major contributor to inflation is oil prices. Yes. Right. Transportation, you need oil. Uh, what else? Uh? Basically, every everything single thing you need. Every oil, single right? thing. Everything you, you yeah. need oil, right? Even so, plastic is actually a byproduct of it ultimately. Exactly. Yeah. So when oil prices goes up, inflation is going to go up. Yeah, and that's right. In the past two years, we are all suffered from inflation. That's right. Now, some of you may may ask, right? Uh, this one percent, it's actually like, eh? Actually, it's not that much, right? Mm -hmm. But I think what's scary is actually the emotions of people and how people react to the prices. Yeah. And number two, how OPEC rejoices and uh, straight away, yes, no more cheap oil, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and 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 OPEC still wants people our, to cut up put some. Our chance of uh making yeah. money, you know, uh, that's uh, how OPEC uh, will think <laughs> usually. Now, uh, on the other hand, um. It's not just Russia, Ukraine, uh, but also the whole Middle East itself is not in a very, very stable situation oh, if you actually look right. at it, right? Uh, I think firstly, when we talk about the Pal Palestinian-Israeli uh, war right now, war. Uh, it is still not... It is still not resolved, and Israel at this point right now still doesn't quite want to cease fire. Uh, yeah, so that's a, it's a really sad case there right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, you obviously we need it. Yeah. They can't mean you. Like, oh, right. Time to just back away, right? Like, that's my opinion of it. Uh, but never mind, we are not going to touch that. That's a very touchy subject. Yeah. Mm. Uh, no. Nonetheless, uh, we can see that uh, Iran, Syria, all these uh, are blaming Israel uh, for this attack that is happening in yeah. uh, the consulate building in Syria itself, right? Yeah. And then so, so, so yeah. So the so the Middle East war now is between uh, Israel and Palestine. Yeah, right? but looks like it's spreading. Yeah, it's spreading now. Yeah. You have new country coming in Iran now uh, because there's a uh, attack on their consulate right. building in Syria. So they like, say, hey, you attack my building, I'm going to retaliate. Yeah. So it looks like it's going to yes. get more and more complicated. So Israeli has been carrying out some uh, interesting assassination apparently mm. uh, in quite many places. Mm. And uh, that's why recently you hear this story that Malaysia had this uh, Israeli spy. Mm. Yeah. Then uh, I was reading The Economist and they were talking about how Israel actually sent in some assassins to really? actually uh, assassinate uh, Hamas leaders and uh, yeah. like all these, uh, their enemy side, lah, right? Yeah. Uh, to, to actually kill certain important people, assassinating them in other countries' soil. Mm -hmm. And we all know that Mossad is quite powerful when they carry this kind of stuff, right? And uh, recently when Malaysia side, there was this Israeli spy that got caught. Mm -hmm. uh, until now, it's a bit hush-hush. Not hush-hush, I mean, it came on. It's let's not comment too much. Over and tell us some stories, right? <laughs> yeah. Do reach out to us. I uh, will be more than happy to hear it. Yeah. Now, nonetheless, all this leads to the one thing, which is inflation. Because if you look at this, right? Because of this whole thing, uh, a lot of things are going haywire. And uh, recently, yeah, crazy. I don't know why even cocoa price also went up. Uh. <laughs> yeah, cocoa. Wow, cocoa price. If you. Price. Yeah, I I actually did a post on my Instagram today. I say cocoa price went up by hundred and thirty percent. Just this. This three months only. Yeah, more Short chicken than Bitcoin, man. More chicken, more chicken than Bitcoin. If you are a futures trader and you are trading cocoa, yeah. you make more money doing that. They probably that made a lot of money. Compared to yes. you... Uh, oh, either they lost a lot. La. Either way. Ah, uh, yes. If yeah. you short cocoa, then you die. La, right? Yeah, mm. yeah. Either way, either way. Yeah. yeah. And Malaysia is actually a very important cocoa producer in the world. 
mm. right? Uh, we actually have uh, one of the we, we largest producer, right? The world fourth. fourth largest cocoa grinder in mm. the world. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Malaysia is quite an important cocoa player. Yep. So yep. When, when cocoa prices go up, this company is going to make quite a lot of money. Mm. Uh, but I think it's only beneficial for the short term. Nah, it's, it's, it's got a windfall. It's not fundamental. It's just windfall, right? Mm. Yeah, but they could make a lot of money out of that, especially when these kind of cocoa companies actually, they do play futures quite a lot to actually mm. secure their, their revenue streams, right? Yeah, mm. if, let's say they did this, and now they have the access to sell to other people. Woo! Oh, that's a windfall yeah. money, man. Windfall yeah. money. Windfall so money. May, may, maybe we should explain a bit how futures work, right? So the future is a contract for you to lock down the price of the commodity today if you anticipate that the future price is going to go up mm. higher. So if let's say Guangzhou is smart, right? They already lock in the price at, That's right. at yeah. the low and then now it goes up by 130%. So they can exercise their future and buy the contract that they lock in at the price and then they can sell it at the spot market at a higher price. Mm. So that's how they can make extra money from there. Mm. Hey, talking about it, mm. nowadays, uh, do you notice that because things are so volatile, right? Yeah, trading the futures market itself is actually quite, quite exciting, right? Mm. And it's actually a transferable skill because mm. uh, you're learning how to read the charts and reading market sentiment and make short position, making money throughout. Yeah. So uh, actually, one of the projects that recently we are working on is uh, we we are thinking about approaching certain uh, traders, mm. uh, futures traders in the market to actually explore further on how they actually uh, trade. And we are thinking about conducting a workshop on that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a little bit in wraps. Just last minute, I bring it out uh, yeah. Uh, to to talk about it. Uh, we don't have any dates yet. We don't have any things. Uh, but if you guys are interested to find out how to trade the market uh, mm. by using futures or even learning the technical chart and so mm. on, yeah. Um, why not you guys just write yes for us in the comment, right? So that we know that hey, it's it's something yeah. that's of interest. Then we will definitely pursue further. Mm. Yeah, and see uh, what are some people that we can work with to actually discuss on this matter. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I think the other day you were telling me that there's this guy who's a real trader, right? Real trader. Yeah. So if we are talking about interviewing a real trader, the chances are his presentation may not be. Uh, he is he is quite layman, man. Oh, he, yeah. he teaches also, lah. Ah, uh, he teaches also. But he's not guru, right? He's, he's not a guru. He it's, just he's a trader, and then because he's so experienced, and then a lot of all these brokers, uh, people they will invite him to become a speaker. Oh, to 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 have a talk about it. Correct. Right? Yeah. So correct. it's a proper uh proper guy that is uh, yes. doing it. Uh, we actually have a few friends. Uh, in mm. fact, we have one friend who actually trades cocoa. Mm. Right? Literally trades cocoa. Not sure whether he's baking money. Or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe we should call him. Maybe we should call him. Yeah, so if you guys are interested, yeah, please write one or either write yes in the comment. Uh, we'll definitely invite these people up to mm. maybe do something about it. Right? To actually share with you guys how does this work. Now, uh, another thing, right? With uh, intre- uh, inflation rate going up, uh, I think what happened is that Recently, when they did a survey and start asking people what's their what's their expectation of the market, like will the interest rate go down? Uh, what happened is that apparently people are getting more and more pessimistic. Yeah, lo. Yeah. I mean, if oil price is up so high, cocoa price is up so high, if you lower the interest rate right now, ah. Uh, there's only one way for all these commodities to go. This go up even higher. <laughs> so, you know, my wallet is already quite empty. Already. If, if prices still continue to go yeah, up, it's going to be I, extreme yeah, inflation. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Extreme it's going to be very bad. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I think there are some speculation now that says that, uh, you know, in the beginning of the year, people are saying that maybe the Fed wants to cut down interest rate by maybe three times or five times or whatever, right? Now they're only talking about Maybe possibly just one time. Yeah, the and then maybe it's Q4. Year. Yeah, maybe it's Q4 <laughs> towards the end of the year. That's right, that's mm. right. Yeah. Now, uh, one thing uh, I want to bring up, there was this particular article that uh, we read on The Economist mm. just a little bit earlier, talking mm. about like how the inflation is in the world today. And they've kind of, to put it in summary, is that the whole idea is that central bank may have been getting it wrong. La. They are mm. losing their credibility in that sense. Uh, that's the title of the article, right? Mm. Uh, and, and, and we thought that they brought up a very interesting theory. So what they were talking about is that since the 1980s, uh, we enjoyed a relatively low core inflation period. Mm. Uh, it was just stable. Uh, so our central bank was always used to just, you know, responding slowly. Everything is stable. Yeah, and be stuff reactive. Like that. Yeah, be yeah. reactive, right? And that's how they do things. Now, uh, what happened is that he say that because of that, we are so adapted to it. So when things happen, when, we're, when they're reactive, they're actually just quickly, you know, 
uh, respond and this caused some sort of a haywire. And mm. actually, central bank don't like haywire mm. uh, because it caused the market to be instable. Mm. That's the whole theory behind it. Yeah. But the economists, this part, they said this one thing. They said that, yeah, now it looks like things are fine, but there are a few things that are happening. Number one, if you look at Europe, Europe inflation is relatively uh, low, mm. but it's not because things are coming down in price. It's because market is bad. Yeah, yeah. their economy is bad. Market is bad, <laughs> right? Yeah, and then they couldn't reduce their interest rate to actually boost the economy. Mm. So that is actually a problem. So last time uh, is the globally, everyone should like reduce or increase together to manage because of globalization, right? Mm. And you think about it, right? It kind of makes sense, right? Right now, when the world is getting more and more deglobalized, mm. onshoring is happening, maybe it's time that every country needs to start reacting to its own benefit, benefit rate. And we can see that certain countries like Brazil or whatnot, they actually drop their interest rate very quickly recently. Mm. They start dropping it because they already starting to see the prices are coming down, let's just drop it, mm. right? And... Whether over a long run is it going to be good for a market or bad for a market, we, we do not know. But one thing that is for sure that is written there in the economies there, and I do agree, is that the, the market is going to be volatile. The whole situation is going to be volatile. Because if you actually look at this scenario right now, right, everything is heading to a right direction. Mm. The only reason that all this is happening is because someone go and do a drone strike, la, this and that. La. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost like Black Swan every week again or yeah. something like that, right? Yeah, we are we are in a very messy world right now. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> messy position. So their idea is that maybe it's time to to look at it this way and say, hey, let's just respond fast and quick. If let's say inflation go down, it's time to reduce your interest rate accordingly. Mm. So so instead of right, inflation go down, no, 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 only you start reducing, right? Like it's kind of like down, then maintain, then suddenly drop down like that, right? It should be Following, uh, following follow through, follow through. Uh, follow through like, yeah. like, like this one go down then we go down together go up then we go up together but yes this will be totally 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 different from how the world used to work yeah. and it's definitely going to upset a lot of people and it's going to upset a lot of businesses because the way to run it is totally different correct because you imagine uh, today the central bank tell me that my loan is 3% Tomorrow, I wake up, the bank tell me, hey, now your loan is 5% already. That's right. Next That's week, right. tell me, hey, actually, inflation come down, so I lower it back to 4%. It's very hard for business to plan ahead in terms of their budget and how they're going to spend their money and things like that. Mm, mm. Mm. So, yeah. So, that's a that's an interesting piece. Uh, It has its opinion, but again, it's not about everyone agreeing, but mm. just some put for thought, right? Now, so that's one of the reasons why, right? Because when the market over the last few months, people have been expecting... The, the interest rate to go down and therefore the market has been pricing that in and right now this is not happening. Yeah. So yeah. there is a new round of repricing of all the assets right now and maybe that's why many asset classes the prices have been coming down is mm. to take into account that maybe the Fed is go not going to lower the interest rate anytime soon. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> so, uh, on the other hand, I think before we talk about the crypto side, let's mm. talk a little bit about how this affects the stock market yep. itself, right? Uh, I think when it comes to the stock market, it's truly quite interesting. Uh, I think there are some notable things that are happening uh, yeah. from Intel, uh, the new foundry business to Tesla, uh, some of those reports that are coming out. But before that, I want to highlight this very interesting fact that, uh, again, uh, it's about the AI trend, right? You know, mm. We are talking about it. Uh, just over the last year, AI has been like the thing that's driving the market. The AI frenzy. Yeah, the AI frenzy. And suddenly, yeah. the Magnificent 7 just drives the market because they are all tech company. Correct. Yeah. Tech company plus the headline is AI one. <coughs> right? Microsoft is in AI. Yes. Google is in AI. Yes. Apple is in AI. Even Every though AI is just part of your accessory, as long as you got ah, the word AI matter. there, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Things are just going to go up, right? Yeah. Mm. Netflix serve you their video with AI also oh, go up. Right? Correct, correct. Doesn't really matter. You know, these days, even Bloomberg is AI already. That day, that day I saw one a Bloomberg advertisement. You know how in order for you to be uh, Bloomberg literate, uh, you must attend Bloomberg training one. Mm. Because the way they key in their keyboard is different. You use quotes instead of language. Mm, mm. So apparently they call it the AI now where you just type normal English. The terminal is able to identify what you want to ask and then come up with the answer that you want. Oh, wow. So you don't need to go training anymore. Wow, like that also AI. Huh? Uh, they call it AI also. Wow. I'm like, wow, you like that also can. Yeah, I, I, just to share with you guys, right? Um, there are quite some companies that I know of. Uh, 
who actually have AI, but actually is a Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Their back engine is just a spreadsheet, uh. but it's AI, okay? Yeah, so uh, when it comes to uh, the startup circle, sometimes we have a good mm. laugh among ourselves when we mm. find out such thing. But good marketing. Yeah, good, good marketing. 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 Yeah. yeah, anyway, uh, everything start going up. Uh, yeah. But I think recently, the market has started to awaken already because of uh, all these things that are happening. Mm. They start to have to really evaluate and ask themselves, uh, is it fundamentally correct or not? Mm. Like, is it really this particular stock is driven by AI? Like, for example, Apple. I mean, AI is an accessory. It's not a main business, right? So right. you can see it start start coming down, start mm. stabilizing lower, I would say. Uh, you see Tesla, you see uh, other guys start coming down. Even Intel, you start to mm. see the cracks, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, but the companies that are still running up strongly is actually those that are really in the AI field, mm. like NVIDIA, right? Mm. Uh, but even then, also, you can see it's a... Uh, it's like, a, mm, don't know where it wants to go, Di. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It starts to be a bit more yeah. mm, mm. like that, Di. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, there is this whole question about whether is is this an AI, AI bubble and is it going to burst? Mm. Yeah. And and that actually adds more challenges to central banker to say whether they want to reduce the interest rate or not. Because all these asset classes are already so high in prices, right? The valuation is so expensive. If you lower the interest rate some more, it's going to excite investors even more yeah the bubble go yeah, yeah. let's 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 go and borrow more money and buy more That's nvidia right. and uh, buy more tesla right then it will push the valuation even higher and create a even bigger bubble so from the central banker perspective is they are they are they are, they are actually in a very tight spot like. it is it is very hard to decide what what in, what needs to be done yeah. at this point actually yeah. sometimes uh, uh take a take a step back and, mm. and think about it right um Sometimes I wonder, is are all these actually created by greed, right? Of course. Yeah, be- because you think about it, if let's say central banks were to reduce the interest rate, yeah, but you disallow bank to give out margin loans, mm. then that would work just fine, right? Mm. Or either have a more stringent way of approving loan, mm. but they don't. It's a free market, man. It's a free market, yeah. right? Got demand, then I give supply, man. Correct. <laughs> so, so, so it's a, it's to a certain extent something I wonder, right? Mm. And and on the banking perspective, it's like, I mean, if you do that, it's gonna be much more better longevity. But yeah. I think in a in a business perspective, is if I don't do, the other bank is gonna do. Yep. They are gonna catch the profit. I'm not gonna catch the profit, and as a CEO, I'll get fired. Mm. So, there's this whole. No, bank is one thing. Business is also one thing, you know. See, uh, when interest rate goes down, right, I'm motivated to get Correct, loan. Correct, right. But Even if I go to the investor. bank, I, when I go to the bank, the bank says, no, I don't give you loan. Hey, the business is going to be damn angry, you know. Correct. You so, don't give me right, I go next door. I go next door, uh. right? So it's a it's <clears> a cycle, you know. Yes. You think about it, uh, to a certain extent, sometimes you have to, people have to do things responsibility, uh, responsibly, mm. but you can't expect them because it's also hard to judge. Yes. How do how can I truly judge that when you're doing this, are you making a responsible decision or not? Mm. It, it's very hard to judge. You know? Maybe we should put this into ESG also. Yeah. And number two, right? You think about it, right? Yeah. It, so there's this whole concept about like some people say that, hey, you know, then we should have more standardized stuff like universal income, you know, all these kind of things. Are. And that's where all the whole socialism theory, mm. communism theory come in, control the market, like China and that. China is a perfect example, right? Yeah. yeah. But because of that also, uh, there's another problem. It is the ability for me to take risks and break the rules that creates innovation. Mm. Unless the government is so good that the government provides the innovation to you. Lah. It's also like China. Lah. Right. You yeah. think about it, right? Yeah. Sure, it's, yeah. it's a bit difficult, right? Yeah. Yeah, and this is a hot mess. Yeah, yeah, hot mess, hot mess. Anyway, uh, divert too much. We digress. <laughs> Let's go back yeah. to shares. Uh, we talk about the general market mm. in terms of stock and businesses. Let's talk a little bit about some of the notable stock performance. Yes, correct. So, uh, like I mentioned just now, the world is in a very, very messy uh, position right now, right? All the countries, they are fighting with each other. You know, everyone is talking about onshoring, no more globalization and things like that. So one of the things that the US has done is to say that all the chips, preferably everything onshore and make in the US. No more make, make, no more make in China because China is going to steal the technology. No more make in elsewhere. We, know, we don't know when we are going to attack them, right? Things like that. So, uh, But in order for businesses to be motivated to bring their business back to their own country, 
it needs to have some motivation. Mm. So government has to come up with grants, uh, you know, subsidies uh, and things like that. So the US has come up with uh, grants and subsidies for people who bring the chip production back to the US. And Intel has opt for it. They say, okay, great. I'm a US company. My government asked me to go back. Uh, in the past, whatever that, whatever chip that I designed, I passed to people like TSMC and uh, all these chip makers to produce. But right now, you know, I'm a very patriotic company. I'm going to onshore. So they started to build, manufacture their own uh, chips. Mm. That's where problems starts to come. <laughs> because Intel ultimately, their strength is designing the groundbreaking chip. Yep. And they have never done manufacturing for so long, right? Now they suddenly want to get their hands dirty on manufacturing. Mm. Yeah. It's an entirely different skill set. You know? Yes. It's not like TSMC, they are totally in this business, right? You ask them to do 3 nanometer, it's like close eye like that. Yeah. The 3 nanometer can come out. For them, you need to build the infrastructure, la, stuff like that, la, you know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, but nonetheless, they went ahead with it using the government's money and subsidies to build factory. And for the first time in their financial reporting, they're including the foundry manufacturing revenue in their reports. But sadly, because of all this inefficiency and it's a new business and, you know, the plan that is supposed to build and to cater for other chip makers to come and throw, throw orders to Intel, but it never happened. So this business has been making a big loss to Intel. <laughs> a very big loss. You're talking about 7 billion loss in 2023. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And because of that, uh, Intel price has been dropping quite, quite much. Uh. No, I, I have to I have to correct you on one thing though. Yeah. Earlier. Yeah. Um, Intel specialized skills in making innovative chips. Uh. Uh, that that's a long time ago, bro. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's no, it's our old business. Yeah, yeah the yeah. new business is uh, that one is nineties. Is uh is a uh, status quo. Status quo. <laughs> yeah. That's their business model now. Yeah, I, I mean they've been suffering. Yeah, ever mm. since like more and more companies have been building their own chip, mm. right? Uh, they've been suffering. They've they've really really been suffering, right? Uh, I mean they but they are big enough to only die very slowly, lah. Put mm. it this way. So we hope they don't die. Uh, yeah. I think it's a proudly proudly American company mm. and they are they are they are the best what do you call that best best bet for America to kinda you know go back into this whole mm. yeah thing lah. So well never know uh when you have the government supporting you uh yeah you, you could hey, not cheap our government gives you is giving them twenty billion dollars well, to do they, this they already thing. talked about it right yeah. okay, even TSMC did mention what are the main challenges of just setting up the foundry in 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 America itself mm. it's not just it's not just about like it's not just the hardware yeah it's not hardware it's, mm. it's the software you know and software not what not I mean by computer software it's the mm. software as in the human there mm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> because the work ethics of Taiwanese yeah Bro, the, the work ethics. The Asian work ethics. Yes, the is Asian the work till you die ethics there yeah. in TSMC is another level. Mm. You no, know, you should go and check out. Uh, I think there was this vid movie on Netflix at one point that talks about how this China company go and set up factory in America and then the Americans got so pissed off that the Chinese uh, Give, work, yeah. work all the time no money yeah because because the labour force the uh. way they manage the labour force then they need union uh, this and that so because of all that it becomes so tough and why Taiwan is so fast is because they can work over time mm. they can like work over time and then like oh your boss say hey, you, this thing you don't do well you better don't go home you start for need to like, America where can, how can you do that man yeah you, you yeah, can't do that. Sue, it's my right to go home after yeah, you five can't o'clock. Do that. Yeah. yeah, so so all these are part and parcel of the thing that, that makes it really, really difficult. Yeah. yeah, and on top of that, you are catering to only your own business. Mm. Da la, your own business already declining. Yeah, la, your status quo already. <laughs> yeah, it's not expanding, you know. Mm. So, I think that's the tough part. La. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, I think uh, t- Tesla also has quite an interesting story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I memang don't like Tesla since the beginning. Uh. I think uh, <laughs> I think you know me, right? Yeah. But uh, I think whatever that I didn't like about them is playing out slowly. Yeah, very uh, slowly. But, yeah, yeah, very slowly. But but if they manage to change it, then maybe they can come back up again. Uh. But I don't know how. Because 
in the past, yes, Tesla is the EV company. Yes. But today, they are just one of the EV companies. Yes. Everybody is doing EV, right? And uh, BYD has already overtaken them as the largest EV makers in the world. And uh, because of that, um, their market share has been shrinking. Yes. And in the first quarter of this year, um, they only delivered 380,000, 387,000 EVs in in this quarter itself. That's right. Which is one of the smallest delivery since 2020, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so the well, order has been dropping even though they dropped the price. No that's one true, buying. that's true. Uh, Tesla has been uh, suffering recently, and uh, but do note that they have a few advantage, right? Mm. I am, I mean, I'm a supporter, but uh, I do hold their shares just to declare that, right? Mm. Uh, it's just that, but I've been hoping for quite long, so even though right now they drop, I'm still profiting from it. Mm. Yeah, but my point is, I'm taking a cautious position. Mm. Yeah, what do I mean by that is because, uh, like what Charlie Munger said, I wouldn't bet against him. Mm. Yeah, because it's crazy enough. Uh, now, one of the things that they did always talk about is they are ultimate game, gameplay is not just about the car, mm. right? Their car, they have the highest margin. That's mm. number one. You have to understand that. So they do have a lot of space to drop price just to fight with anyone else. Mm. That's number one. Number two, their final, final goal, right, is actually in the area of, uh, of self-driving. Mm. Yeah. And so... Their idea is that they see themselves as a tech and software company and that's the way that they employ people and if you actually ask, ask uh, Tesla themselves in one of the interviews, mm. he said that he's not afraid of any company except Apple. Mm. So he sees himself as Apple, no. He mm. don't see himself as a car manufacturer. Mm. Now, you, he, he may sound crazy, but never underestimate a crazy person like him who can make mm. things happen. Yeah. He, he said that he's going to build a <laughs> spaceship, spaceship he, he made it happen, it. Yeah. and it is crazy enough to say that I'm gonna reuse the 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 parts of the spaceship, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, which never happened before. Well, so don't bet against him. <laughs> uh, he has his own plan. Uh, I wouldn't go and shop his stuff, but mm-hmm. I am a bit careful right now. Not so much because I don't believe in him or anything like that, mm. but because of the overall market environment, this adds on to the risk. Mm. That's all. Yeah, because at this point right now, there's a lot of risk. So I prefer to be a bit more cautious with the risk that, that I'm taking. Mm. Uh, that, that's pretty much about it in my opinion mm. for me la, in yep. the position of Tesla. Yep. Yeah. But uh, macroeconomic is one thing. Uh, uh, Tesla also recently suffered an attack. Mm. They suffered an attack in their Germany plant uh, because some, uh, some activists say that Oh, you know, you are building all this giga plant, giga factory in my country, and then you're gonna expand, you're gonna chop all the trees and all that, right? So they went to sabotage their, <laughs> their they they went to sabotage the the electricity substation near to their factory, so that that affected their their uh, production quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So uh, that that's all about when it comes to stocks. I think stock market generally will be much more sensitive towards the uh, what do you call that market inflation condition. data, market mm. condition, and so on. Uh, because it still remain one of the largest investment asset mm. around, right? Uh, let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin because uh, here comes to this question that I think we should kind of answer at the same time, right? Mm. Uh, which I just want to highlight from but coin quintillionaire and this is a throw away account he said please answer me how to now be emotional i suppose not yeah not be emotional when dealing with crypto volatility seems i only buy high and sell low sometimes i buy lower and it goes lower help me please Mm. i even got my father to invest in seventy two thousand. i keep telling him that bitcoin will be 100k by the end of 2024 and by 200,000 by 225 now you call me a chasu. <laughs> yeah. You don't laugh at people. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Now he doesn't trust me anymore. Please help me not to be emotional when dealing with crypto. Mm. Uh, I'm using a throwaway account due to shame. Should I hodl or should I sell now? Mm. Um, now, hold on. Uh, we'll definitely answer your question along the way. Uh, but I have to say that we won't be giving you answers. Yep. Right. The reason being is because uh, it's it's we shouldn't. Yeah. We shouldn't. But we'll. 
run through some of the thought process to mm-hmm. help you to uh, consider and mm. think about it, right? Uh, I think firstly, let's talk about some Bitcoin fundamentals, right? Mm. Uh, I think it's pretty interesting. When we look at Bitcoin recently, uh, the price has been going down, right? Mm. Uh, it's been hovering between 68 to 70 over 1,000 and then drop back to about 65 and then it goes back up there. You know, this is the second time that this is happening. Mm. Uh, every time it doesn't go below 60, uh, 64 plus, it will touch a bit. Even at 65, we'll just touch a bit, but a few hours, it gets back up, right? Mm. Now, um, there are different theories to this. Some say Bitcoin is weakening. Number one, definitely we know that because interest rate environment. Mm-hmm. yeah. But number two, I think it's very important that we actually look at how much of money is actually going into Bitcoin. Mm. The Bitcoin inflow itself is very, very important. Mm. Yeah. So when it comes to the Bitcoin inflow, uh, Frankie, you have a table that you have pulled up, right? You want to mm. share with them a little bit about uh, okay. what this table is about? Yeah, so I think the creation of Bitcoin spot ETF, right, is one of the best thing that is created <laughs> in 2024. It adds some data points. Yes, it adds yeah. more data for you to verify and say that, oh, that this is a concrete number to show how much money is going in and out of the crypto that's asset. Right, that's in the right. past, we're just relying on the blockchain data and all that. Yes, it's transparent and all that, but it can be technical and very hard to track if mm. you don't know how to read the and quotes. And it is only for normal people. Yes. Is, I mean, I mean, it's only for retail investors, mm. not so much on institution investors. Correct. Yeah. But right now with Bitcoin ETF, mm. we can see... We like, can track like... What's the mainstream... Exactly. M- mainstream money inflow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This is solid dollars and cents flowing into Bitcoin and, and we are able to track it every single day. That's so right. the reason why Bitcoin has been coming down is that in the period of end of March, I think around 20 something of March, the entire week, we suddenly see for the first time ever since the creation of uh, Bitcoin ETF that outflow started to happen. Mm. But if you think about it, right, this thing was created in January, January or February, I cannot remember. And then since that day, every single day is info, info, every day is like five, six hundred million, five, six hundred million, and then you know. Of course, there will be some point that people will say, hey, I think this is too much. And time to take some profit. Time to yeah. take some profit and go out. So I think that one week of outflow makes perfect sense. Mm. And if it drops down a bit, uh, yeah, 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 this is just another day, like yep. normal, yep. Yep. normal. But the interesting is right now, right, if you look at the flow again, uh, the outflow has stopped. Yes. It's starting to to register like maybe like 80 million, yeah. 100 million kind of inflow every single that's day. That's right, that's right. That is saying, now, I don't know whether it's institutional investors or retail, but maybe... But there's a steady stream of huge money going in. Yes. That's Pe- what we can people say, People right? are trying to accumulate at this price level yes. already. And they're not buying from uh, any uh, exchanges that are that are like crypto that, exchanges. They're, they're buying it on the US stock market yes, and they're buying the Bitcoin ETF mm. and we are looking at three-figure million flows of money going in, right? Mm. Uh, almost regularly is three million, mm. right? Uh, not three million, almost regularly is three-figure million. Mm. Yeah, so uh, on the uh, 3rd of April, we are looking at 113. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the... Uh, 2nd of April is 2nd of April, yeah, 40 yeah. million. Yeah. yeah, so we are looking at money flowing in. So that's fundamentally... There are two things that are still happening for mm. sure. Number one, uh, the Bitcoin halving is happening soon. Uh, number two, I think two weeks only, right? Yeah, very very soon. Uh, yeah, two weeks very only. Very oh, so two weeks from now we will see what happened. Yeah. <laughs> then number two is uh, uh, inflow of money is still coming in. Mm. Yeah. Now these two things are happening. Mm. Then we can see right now that interest rate is is uncertain of whether is it going to go down or not. Mm. And it is natural that people will take less risk to leverage, to, uh, you know, go crazy in the market. And and we know that for Bitcoin to go crazy, crazy, uh, you also need a loosening of interest rate. Correct. It yeah. means interest rate must come down. Correct. Yeah. Fundamental will build, but it takes time. Mm. Yeah. The cheeky exciting is usually... Yeah, with together with the interest rate. Yeah. If, if, if you guys don't catch the relationship, right, let me play this scenario with you. Uh. Let's say bank tomorrow tells you that if you borrow 1 million from me, right, the interest rate is 0%. Mm. I bet everyone will go and borrow 1 million ringgit and buy Bitcoin because everyone expecting Bitcoin price will go up. And as everyone does, does that, right, the inflow 
in to Bitcoin is becoming so great, it's going to push uh, mm. Bitcoin price even higher. So that's where the relationship comes in between these two assets. That's right. Mm. Yeah. So um, now, I'll share with you another story, right? In relevant to the story that was shared by uh, Bud Quintillion, yeah, mm. that account, right? Uh, just some time ago, a friend actually shared with us, uh, these guys are very, very, very rich, right? Uh, they they wanted to invest their extra money. Mm. Yeah, and when the person proposed to say that, hey, we will, maybe we should put some of our family fund into uh, crypto, into Bitcoin, right? Mm. Uh, and the family members was like, ah, ha, 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 like that, right? Mm. Yeah. And what happened was that they invested their money into, uh, at that time, Bitcoin was 50,000. Mm. 50,000 uh, USD. Yeah. So then the family members did not invest the money into it. They disagreed. So the family fund didn't go into that, but instead it went to the stocks. Yeah. And definitely after that, we knew what happened. Stocks came down, right? And mm. crypto also came down. Mm. Crypto also came down. Yeah. But today, the stock remained down. Bitcoin, if they bought it during that time, now they already made. Mm. Yeah. Regardless of now, the market is considered down, right? Because it was 50K during that time mm. when he proposed. Something like that. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, now, second thing, buying it at 72,000. Uh, let me tell you my highest price of, price of Bitcoin purchase so far, 72,000. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Because I average. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I, you're DCA, every month I because you're DCA. Yeah. So, fair, fair. why I can talk like that, right, is because I've been DCAing for right. two years. Right, right, right. No, 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 more than two years. Two, three years. Oh. Hey, no, no, no. And more, more, more than that, more than that, more than that, more than that. 2020, right? 20... Yeah, when, when Mr. Money TV started, I started right. DCAing into crypto already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. It's just that the amount uh, got bigger along the years. Uh. Mm. Yeah. So, I'm very steady. Uh. I don't need to worry about the market. Yeah, market go up, go down. I don't really care. Yeah. Mm. So, this is one way to actually be less emotional, in my opinion. Mm. I think people get very emotional in their investment when they put in one big lump sum at one point in time and they want it to happen within a short period. Mm. Yeah. But if let's say you 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 take out the money, you cut it into many small portion and then you invest a little bit, 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 you become less jittery, you become much more stable emotionally as well. But it requires you to be patient. Mm. So it is two sides. If you do not want to be patient, you got to expect emotions to kick in more. Mm. Yeah. Then you need to learn to be able to handle that emotion. But if you don't mind being patient, you don't have to deal with too much of emotion. Yeah. The only emotion you are dealing with is FOMO. Mm. Yeah. But it's not going to be too bad. La. Not going to be like people scold you. La. So, uh, did my wife also went in? Uh, my family members went in. My family members also went in. Mm. Yeah. And they also went in about... Uh, some went in earlier, some went in uh, a little bit later. Uh, but because of what I've done before, I, I'm I'm quite okay with it because I average, ma. Mm. So I, I don't really feel it. Mm. So, and I can actually say that this is how it goes. Uh. So if you if you recall, remember in the early days, ah, just talk about two years ago when, when crypto Bitcoin crashed. Mm -hmm. that time you started becoming more active in mm. Bitcoin, right? Mm. Remember that time the whole thing dropped? And then when I told you like, hey, my position is like that, you also yeah. like, uh, yala, whatever, la, like that, right? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the whole thing dropped, ma, mm. dropped by about, I, I lost about 80% of my portfolio, right? I told mm. you. Mm. Then you also was like, uh, yala, yala, are you sure <laughs> not like that? Mm. Uh, today, I'm very happy. Uh. Mm. <laughs> so, my point to you is this, uh, I hope it helps whoever that's investing out there. Whatever asset that you're investing, the only way to make sure that you can play this game safe is actually by diversifying. And there's two ways of diversifying. Diversifying across asset and diversifying across time and price. Mm. All right? So that is probably the best way to go. So I hope that helps to give you some uh, thinking points on how do you uh, invest. Mm. Now, uh, you did say this one thing here. Okay, I think this is fantastic. I thought this is a very, very good question that answers a lot of things, right? Later, mm. you we just pick one more question. We can count team for tonight. All right. Yeah. He said this, uh, seems like I always buy the hype. I buy Top Glove as hype. I buy Tesla as the hype. Even my Rolex I bought at the hype. Sometimes it's better off placing my money into a dividend form of investing. Now, 
I have to say that this is a classic example of not managing your emotion. You have to you have to understand, right? When it comes to investing, it's a very contrarian thing, mm. right? Actually, think about it. People who are good at investment are they don't think normally, right? Uh, so Warren Buffett used to say you you are supposed to be greedy when people are fearful and you're supposed to be fearful when everyone is greedy. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But it's easy to say but it's very hard to practice. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So it, it's a lot about emotional management. Mm. It's a lot about emotional management. So uh, I, I have to tell you this one thing. The problem that you are dealing with it is not what you think is right. I, I bet you already know whatever we told you. Mm. Your problem is controlling yourself. No, most of the yeah. time, this is this is what happens. So let's say, for example, top glove, right? Because you give an example, top glove. Okay, people tell you top glove very good and whatnot. Okay, you go and do your studies. Yes, it's probably great and whatnot. And then when you turn your head to your trading screen, right? Whoa, it's very expensive. But number one, people tell you that it's very good and everyone's buying. Number two, your your research tells you that yes, it is a solid business. The only issue now is that the price keep going up and if I don't click buy now, right, it's going to go up even higher. Mm. Then this where emotion and say, I just go, I don't care, like, since i already right. done research. And in the past, it's been going up. Correct, right? correct, correct. Yeah. So this is usually what happens. So you must understand, right, investing is different from hiring. Mm. Hiring, you may want to hire someone with a good track record. Mm. Investing, right, Track record is the past. The track record is the past few years, uh, uh, not the share price of the past it. two months. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people mistaken track record of an investment is the price of the past two months. Mm. It is not. The track record is their ability to generate income mm. over the past few years. That's yeah. why one of the first thing you learn in investing is to look at the fundamental track record of operating cash flow, operating income, gross margins of the past few years, how did it stack up? Mm. It's boring, right? But the exciting part is, the past two months, the price shot up. And you think that that is the, the, the evidence that the company is doing well. No, mm. that's not. That's not, all right? So FOMO is very real. So uh, Bitcoin, yeah, uh, I, I, I will have <laughs> to say, one of the easiest way to deal with emotions, in my opinion, is to keep yourself accountable to someone. It will be very annoying, but do that. Uh, I think this is something that actually I do a lot. Uh, they they find me annoying, I suppose, sometimes in the office where I tell them, hey, should I do this? Should I do that? Uh, then anyway, you just do la, do it yourself. La, why you want to ask me? One of the reasons I ask them is because <laughs> the more I ask them, the more I feel calm about oh. it after that. Because my formal mm. energy come out of them. Mm. Oh, yeah. so you release it out of them then you don't feel it so much anymore. Ah, correct. Then you can think twice. Correct. Because oh. those of you notice, right? Mm. I like to talk about something like as if it's already happened. Mm. Then you're where, oh, you bought already, right? Then I'm like, no, I never buy. <laughs> I just talk like I buy already. Because yeah. when I talk like I buy already, I feel like all oh, my energy come out of mm. Then I feel, I kind of enjoy that feeling that, yeah, this is how it feels like if I have it. Mm. Then when you talk more, right, and I have a conversation that I will be able to calm myself down and say, actually, what's yeah. the point? Uh? <laughs> uh, then I will evaluate based on facts again. Right. So so that's my way of handling my emotions. Uh. So you just have to find a way of uh, how to do it. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I thought this was a very good question that leads to a very practical way of investing. So I thought I want to spend a little bit more time to it. Yeah. And and the way you say it, uh, mm. I, I think you do need some 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 uh, anchor lah, mm. so that you don't feel too bad about yourself, okay? Uh, so last thing, I want to say one thing. Uh, just one last thing, right? Uh, a lot of people will have this thing. They will always say that, oh, you see, last time I tried investing, I lose money, now I shouldn't invest again. Mm. I like to tell people this thing. One. You you got graduate university and high school, right? Mm. Last time you do homework or do wrong before, not? Got when you got do wrong and then you tell teacher, I don't want to study, I quit university. <laughs> uh. No, right? You, you do again, lah. Right? You, you you spend time redoing your paper, you redo your exercise until you get it right. La. But mm. you don't go and like straight away retake the whole exam and pay 1 million or what, no 100,000 or, or or 3,000 bucks for your exam. La. You you do more practice paper first. La. Mm. So that's the whole point. La. You know, we know how to do it. It's just somehow we think very differently when mm. it comes to investing. 
Yeah, so I think I talk too much already. Uh, Frankie, you want to pick up one question and answer it uh, before we call it an end tonight? Uh, okay. Uh, da, da, da. I'm seeing a lot of things right here. Uh, let's take this one. We are turning into a aging population. Uh, you expect ac uh, asset prices to go up forever. Who will buy it once we run out of young people? Uh, now, based on this point, I think it solidifies that <laughs> asset prices can go up even more in an <laughs> aging population environment. Because who holds the money? Is <laughs> all the is all the aging well all the middle middle age. And above people, they are holding all the wealth because they have been working so much, they have accumulated so much Correct. wealth. They are the ones who are, you know, controlling all the wealth and it's the young people that are struggling right Some now. Somehow they can only eat that much, right? Exactly. So, so much extra money worth to yeah, eat. Yeah, and then children also finish their whatever, they have no more responsibility. So this group of people is the best people. Eh? <laughs> it's the best people. So um, forever go up or not, Ultimately, it falls back to whether the economy can grow or not. That's the most fundamental basis for prices to go up. But the assumption is always the world will continue to improve. And, mm -hmm. and as the world improves, the prices will go up. Then the secondly is aging population. It means that the population of human, the population, population of human will shrink. Yeah. So the concentration of wealth is going to be even more. Mm. So these people is going to be even richer and decisions are made based on fewer people. Yeah. I think the... So the wealth gap correct, is going to be even correct. larger yeah, yeah. in the future years. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so hard to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So mm. so I, th I think that's a, that is quite obvious when you look at like a country like Japan or either Hong Kong. Mm. Yeah, we, we can see that very obvious. Mm. And... And countries, uh, okay, don't talk about countries that are corrupted. That kind is a different story. Mm. But if you look at Hong Kong, uh, it's a it's a very clear concept of that happening. Yeah, yeah, where the older people who actually own properties in the past because it was cheap, mm. they just don't need to do anything. They are enjoying yeah. life. Yeah. Passive income. Passive income. Yeah. And then the younger people are struggling. You want to buy a house, you can buy it. You work so hard to pay you, the rent. You turn to the left, you want to buy that house, Uncle Lee owns it. You turn to the right, the same Uncle Lee owns it. You <laughs> go up another mountain, the other, the Uncle Lee's brother owns it. Mm. Yeah, that, yeah. That that Lee family owned a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So that's the that's the whole concept. So will, will asset prices go up? Yes. That's my belief. It mm. will go up further. But will there be a lot of demand in terms of quantity? Mm. Maybe not. Yeah, because there's less people and less people can afford. But because they are so rich, they are not bothered to sell it. They don't have to sell it desperately. Mm. So what happens is that there'll be the little people who wants to demand it. They are also usually rich. Therefore, they can play, pay that cutthroat price. Mm. And this is how things become more and more inflated. Mm. In fact, that's playing out in the whole stock market. Right? Yep. We can see stock market is going up like crazy, but mm. retail participation is not high, you know. Yeah. Hey, think about it, right? Now stock market market cap is actually bigger than 2021. Yep. Yeah, and 2020, 2021. But who's making the money? There was a lot of retail participant. Yeah. This time round, there's very little retail participant. Correct. Yeah. Me? The money all shift back to the to the same group. Correct. People, you know. The money just shifted back to institution. Yep. Yeah, so mm. that's what we are seeing right now in quite philosophical uh, actually when it comes mm. to the whole market. Yeah, it's study of human behavior. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I think we have come to an end of tonight's episode. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us tonight. Uh, now, firstly, uh, I will thank some of uh, the people who have been partnering with us. I think one of it is Luno, right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, if you guys want to get your hands on some cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, yeah. Uh, you can check out Luno using Luno's account. Uh, I personally buy my crypto using Luno. The reason being is because I find it very troublesome to buy USDT via P2P and I've seen people whole account getting frozen just because mm. they do that. So uh, I wouldn't recommend uh, doing that, just just go on Luno is much more safer. So you can use the link that we have in the comments below. 
Uh, I think yeah, you get uh, is... you actually get higher reward if you use our code compared to you just use other. Oh the... really? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I think wow. I think if I you use, I didn't know that. I, I think if you go the mainstream code is fifty ringgit. If oh you're not wow, two hundred and fifty. No, you buy two hundred fifty worth, you get oh, okay. seventy five. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Usually, you only get like twenty five, twenty five yeah. or fifty. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. So if you use our code, you get higher. So that's mm. all about it, everyone. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. All right. Good night.